Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. We have Roman Pokornik with us today with Chameleon.io. That's Chameleon, C-H-A-M-E-L-E-O-N dot I-O. And what we're going to be talking about is business to business marketing, which of course is coincidental because Chameleon is a business to business or B2B marketing platform. But Roland, before you, uh, I'd like you to introduce yourself and when you're doing that, uh, tell us what are some of the real key differences between kind of business to consumer and business to business marketing? Because at least what I've found is a lot of things with like, say, business to consumer, you're talking, say, something like constant contact that's about $20 a month. Whereas when you talk business to business, you typically have platforms that are closer to $200 a month. And I think a lot of people don't necessarily know what the key differences are. So I'd like you to, uh, well, first of all, introduce yourself and uh, kind of, yeah, talk with us about kind of what makes some of those key differentiations. Okay, wonderful. Thanks for having me. I'm Roland from Chameleon IO. You just padded it out perfectly. So thanks for that. So I've been always involved in B2B marketing <laughs> myself. I don't have to too much clue or I wouldn't say clue, but I don't have experience with B2C marketing at Got all. It. And we as a business, we started quite a while ago, over nine years ago. And we are far from the US, but we have always had US customers and of Got course it. primarily businesses. So it was B2B from day one. Although we had these smaller subscriptions that you just mentioned, this $10, $20. Yeah. And uh, over time, we the email creation platform that we built evolved and we decided to differentiate also on the price point. So I think price points is definitely a different story, but there are so many B2B tools that are yeah. cheap. That's not necessarily the, the only thing, of course. Got it. Yeah, the, absolutely. Well, yeah. You know, but what are some of the key points of differentiation? I mean, you know, because I think that, you know, when you're talking business to business marketing, what you're usually trying to do is get the attention of decision makers, either like say technology, purchasing, whomever, uh, you know, hiring could be HR, could be hiring managers. You're looking to get the attention and then build credibility with decision makers, which is kind of tricky. It's not an easy thing to do. Definitely. We had a content first approach. Uh -huh. And we built our product, the Chameleon product. Previous or previous product was the first thing that we built. We were pretty beginners, so we just launched it live. Uh, launched live on Product Hunt, uh, did some outreach on LinkedIn, and tried to build some credibility in in a few communities that are relevant to us, especially the email geek community. Yeah. And with the second product, we the Chameleon IO platform, we decided to launch pretty i would say a blog that's that dives deep into certain topics that are relevant to our audience and these huh. are not i wouldn't say technical topics but uh, more in-depth topics so not we're not just scratching the surface we're trying to yeah. dive deeper into something and show that we are experts in the in the certain area where we of course where our product is concentrated or where we where we fit a need so Got i think it. for Anybody starting out, that would be my primary advice. Although nowadays, SEO is becoming even more complicated than it was before. <laughs> it's turning into a nightmare uh, because you always have to keep up with the tide. So Google yeah. is changing things. You need to change things on your site. The link building part is ex extremely challenging uh, yeah. you, to get quality backlinks. So what we did initially, we did a bunch of outreach to find sites where we can write quality guest contributions. So we uh -huh. didn't outsource that. We didn't want to, you know, hire somebody from Upwork and uh, write a low quality art article in our name. So we invested a bunch of resources into writing those articles. Yeah, yeah. Again well, and just... again. Yeah, I was just thinking. Yeah, because you know, in the old days, what people would do is they send, they just blast their site out to a whole bunch of link farms. You know, Google put updates in about ten years ago that killed that. But yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, I remember I used to see ads that would basically hire people to essentially just click on links to drive up clicks, <laughs> and then uh, you know, and then there would also be these ads for these essentially enormous link farms. Yes, exactly. And I think as for B two B, what I see is pretty successful at least in some industries, is LinkedIn or a strong LinkedIn strategy. Yeah. We don't have that in place. I always try to launch it, uh, but I'm I'm not 
desperate enough or I cannot really stick with the schedule and be yeah. interesting enough. But I see that it, it works out for many in the B2B yeah. space. Got to it. Get credibility and, you know, have some sort of social shares, which won't really happen for you if you are on B2B provider. You won't get too, too many social shares anywhere else apart from LinkedIn, I would say. Yeah. So the Got it. Facebook, or there are some businesses who use TikTok, but I wonder how. Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah. But well, so like, for example, one of the things that I do is, you know, so like, uh, you know, I'll frequently put, say, like snippets from a podcast episode on TikTok. Don't, don't get me wrong, you know, I don't get millions of views. It's, you know, but I think the, you know, generally speaking, right, at least what I've found is that, you know, most creators will have kind of a, you know, a main platform, you know, for me, that's YouTube and LinkedIn. And of course, right, I'll record our podcast, the video will go on YouTube, the audio will go through RSS. And then LinkedIn generally tends to be where, put most of my attention and then you know facebook instagram all of uh, twitter all those other platforms generally tend to be where i repost derivative content and of course there's all kinds of tools that you can use to do that yeah and since we've been in the email space so with, with our product offering of course we've been using email from day one and uh, we do build build an email list and mostly mm -hmm. we have company addresses there so that's yeah. one way to do it uh, you just need to make sure that you incentivize your newly new subscribers to actually use their business email address. And then yeah. you can at least provide them a bit, figure out who they are, what company they work for. And that's, yeah, a, well, that's a really but, important sp step. Yeah. Let's dive into that a little bit. Building a business-based email list, kind of what strategies have you found is the most effective? Because, you know, of course, building a consumer-based email list is... I'm going to say is not that hard. Building a targeted consumer email list is much harder. And I would say building a business-based email list is even harder still, because of course, you're probably just like me and where I get hundreds of messages every day. And so, you know, people are much more reluctant to give out their email address than they used to be. Yes, that's happening. And I think the content that you send out needs to be pretty specific to your niche. And yeah. uh, it has to add some sort of value because no matter if you are in let's say in business consulting or email marketing like we do there are seasonal topics everybody writes yeah. about the same thing you will see the same topic show up on on sites pretty much every season of the year if you will see an article about black friday emails campaign strategies or yeah. there are evergreen topics so what i see is important is to find your actual tone the the tone that resonates with your audience and also yeah. the, the kind of topics that you can add something new to. So I'm quite a fan of the book zero, zero to one. And there's another uh -huh. one which says that you just need good to great. That's the other. Yes. One. So you need to really focus on one thing where you want to be the best and that where you can outperform others. And if you find that kind of topic of your own and you try to promote it to your audience, which will be, I would say, even if you have a B2B product, you will have B2C customers, of course, or sure. very small businesses who are rather a, a single person running something. But even with them, if you focus on small, medium businesses, then I think there are those type of customers are a bit closer to the B2C type. That worked out, for example, in the email space for MailChimp because they built a huge audience with the freemium model. Yep. And... Uh, They've been focused on small businesses from day one. Yeah, and got it. They did a bunch of promotion that you wouldn't expect from too many B2B companies. So like branding wise, at least, if you would type into YouTube, MailChimp, ads or something like mm -hmm. that, you can find a bunch of fun advertisements that they created or they shoot these videos. They are a bit similar in fashion to what you saw from Apple and Microsoft in the early days when they pretty much made fun of each other's products in one way or another. So you can be a funny brand. Yeah. I think there are so many B2B brands who also want to become a love brand. So if you can somehow become a love brand and love when by say, a certain community. Yeah. When you say love brand, what does that mean? To me, it means a brand which has a pretty much positive feedback in people's minds. It's all about PR, of course, yeah. but 
you need to invest a lot into building that kind of love brand, be helpful to others in your own area, own industry, help others establish connections. Uh -huh. In introductions, I think those really matter a lot because if you are the type of person or if you are the type of brand that helps others to, to work with your, not competitors, but, you know, similar tools that yourself or similar service providers like yourself, then uh -huh. you will be something that will be respected at least for fair business practices. And that's a good position to be in. And then, of course, you can expect the favor backwards also. So uh -huh. it will come back to you if you have this paid forward mentality. So if you help others, they will help you at the end of the day too, no matter if it's B2B. There are some cases, for example, when I refer customers to a competitor because mm -hmm. I know that their solution is ideal for their need and maybe we would be too expensive. Got it. Okay. Well, let's see. So one thing that we kind of started talking about, but kind of moved yeah. past that I'd like to come down to a little bit is you were talking about a content for a strategy. Talk to me a little bit. I mean, because it sounds like that's really the way that you built your business. I mean, and because at least my observation is, you know, since B2B is, you know, one of the sphere, the places where I operate, I think that one of the key challenges is A, to get people's attention, but then B, to try to shorten the sales cycle because B2B sales cycles can sometimes be really long. And it, you know, especially if you're an independent operator, it could be very difficult to pay the bills while you're waiting for some of your sales to unfold. Yeah, actually with the content first strategy, what I meant is that we have a software platform. So that's a bit different from, you know, selling services yeah. because you need time to build your software. You need time to actually make it live and yeah. make it out of beta. So let's put it Got this it. way. So you can ask for money in exchange for the usage. So what we did, we started writing or blog, I think like a year before we launched uh -huh. the software live. And at first we focused on building up a, a list of early adopters or people who were interested in the kind of offering we published on the site. That was an email design tool for email marketing teams at the early days, in the early days at least. And we built a list of these people, did a bunch of interviews. My goal was not to not only to figure out their specific needs that we can have a solution for inside the platform, but also to pretty much figure out what sort of topics they are interested in. So that's how I think a content first strategy would be, apart from you know hunting for SEO friendly keywords where you can rank. You need mm -hmm. to do some work on the other end to produce some sort of high quality deep dive posts on specific topics, which won't give you the best visibility. So you won't get the biggest number of visitors from those blog posts, yeah. but you will get relevant ones. That's how we shifted our strategy in the last couple of years from higher volume, lower intent keywords to, to the opposite. Yeah. So that's well, and yeah, I think that's actually, you know, at least to me, I think that's the probably one of the big B2B marketing important parts is to say that, you know, your natural tendency is to want to try to go broad market, which, you know, I think the you know, broad market, if you're trying to build authority and credibility, it's actually not a bad thing if people see your brand, your face, and your message in a lot of different places. But on the other hand, as far as like trying to kind of to pull in subscribers, you don't need to pull in everybody. You know, you really only need a fairly small number of, you know, kind of highly relevant, highly interested subscribers in order to have a very successful B2B type of business. Yes, exactly. And we we had a quite broad audience with this saying that the the software is for email teams. And yeah. now we are launching a new type of product that's a bit more enterprise focused anyway. So that will be a pretty narrow audience. So most likely we, we won't have as we won't concentrate as much on the content creation part because that's just not the way to do it. But there is pretty easy because the software is clearly for publishers, big volume publishers who have 50 or hundred or several hundred different email newsletters. And that's what we have. A platform for and it. it's easy because you know it's a pretty narrow niche and i would be able to name after a deep research of course those few hundred prospects that i want to talk with and then if you can narrow down in a niche like this then i think it really helps a lot with figuring out what sort of marketing methods or sales approach 
you should be using. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's see. So I think we've had a pretty good conversation so far. Before we wrap, uh, give us one or two last thoughts as far as kind of, you know, really succeeding in B2B marketing. And then make sure to give out your website one last time and let everybody know where they can find you. It sounds like LinkedIn is most active social. If there's anywhere else where you tend to be active, let us know where to find you there too. Okay. So I think the biggest and most important thing is definitely finding your niche, your voice, yeah. and show your expertise as much as you can. If you learn how to use LinkedIn professionally, in a professional manner, I would yeah. say, then do it. Start it from day one. Maybe it will be way more successful than blogging on your site. Yeah. About myself, I'm, I can be found via email. That's, that's what I use every day. Gotcha. It's Roland at Chameleon IO. We, instead of the regular spelling, we have mail in the middle of the word because we thought that it will be fun, but it's hard to pronounce or type. <laughs> so anyway, we, we provide an email creation platform for teams. Typically, we, we serve companies who have a marketing team with three to five people at least, and they are yeah. struggling with inefficiencies in their email production process. And I blog a lot on our site. I tend to speak at online and offline conferences, and that's something I would advise others to do. So, so you can easily go out and pitch conferences. They are actively looking for speakers all the time. Okay. There are some sites where the, which list out the conferences, so you can hunt for those as an individual professional, of course, but mm -hmm. those topics need to outstand from the crowd too. <laughs> Yeah. And last thing, yeah, the, the website is chameleon.io. I guess it will be somewhere in the show notes. So you can click on that. If you need help with email, design email creation, that's when you would, yeah. it would make sense to check out the site. I'm not trying to sell what we do, but it makes sense only if you have this specific need. And apart from that, for fellow B2B marketers, I would say you need to be really consistent and invest your time into building up your credibility each and every day, because it will work out after a few months, even if you're starting out from scratch. Got it. Got it. All right. Hey, Roland, I really, really appreciate your time today. And yeah, just uh, thank you so much. Thanks. Thanks for having me. All right. Have a great day. Same for you. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. So if you liked this episode, please share it on your favorite social media and tag me and then tell me what you did or didn't like about this episode so that I will know what to create for you. And in addition, I would like to share with you the most incredible free gift ever. What I am going to do is I am going to give you a three-day, four-night vacation at one of 30 destinations across the United States completely free with no obligation at all, no timeshare pitch, nothing. In addition to that, what I'm going to do is I am going to do a complimentary savings assessment for your business so that you will understand whether it makes sense for us to work together so that I can help to save you money. The value of this offer is literally between thousands and millions of dollars depending on your business. But even if you don't have a business, if you know somebody who does, I would like to extend that offer to them and still provide a free vacation to you. So just go to offer.terminalvalue.biz right now and enter your information so that I can bring your free vacation to you. Remember, that is offer.terminalvalue.biz, and I am looking forward to talking with you.